हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे वेलकम टू द ऑनलाइन होम डेटी वर्शिप सेमिनार डे थ्री सो लेट स्टार्ट टू टुडे सेशन बाय ऑफरिंग ऑस्पिशियस प्रेयर्स कॉल मंगलाचरण लेट अस ऑल चैन टुगेदर ओम अज्ञान तिमिरांध से ज्ञानाजनाशलाकय चक्षुरोन्मीतमें तस्म श्रीगुरव नम श्रीचैतन्यमनोभीष्ट स्थापित येन भूतले स्वयं रूप कदा मह्यम ददा स्वदाति वंदेहम श्रीगुर श्रीजुतापदकमल श्रीगुरोन्वैष्णवांश श्रीरूप सागृजात सह गण रघुनाथा तम सजीव साइत सवधूत परिजना सहित कृष्ण चैतन्यदेव श्रीराधा कृष्ण पाद सह गण ललिता श्री विशाखा नम ओं विष्णुपदा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदात स्वामीनतिना नमस्ते सारस्वते देव गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेषा शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे नमो महावदन्याय कृष्ण प्रेम प्रदाय कृष्णाय कृष्ण चैतन्य नामिने गौरदे नम हे कृष्ण करुणा सिंधो दीनबंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांतराधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानो सुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वाछाकलपतरोभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पतीता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधार श्रीवास आदि गौर भक्त बृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे मुखम करोति वाचाल पंगु लंघयते गिरी यत्पात वंदे श्रीगुर दीनतारिण परमाधव श्री चैतन्य ईश्वर so welcome to the day 3 home deity worship seminar and we dedicate the last presentation of this home deity worship seminar to his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad it's only because of him that today we have some confidence to speak about deity worship previously if we see in uh, the vedic times or maybe some uh, centuries back it was only the brahmanas who were allowed to do deity worship even currently also the same thing but then more elevated than brahmanas are the vaishnavas the devotees of lord shri krishna whose only aim is to attain krishna and nothing else so prabhupad thought how to become a vaishnav prabhupad thought taught us how to uh, grow much bigger or greater than a brahmana and that's the reason by the mercy of shri prabhupad and the entire guru parampara of brahma madva gaudiya sampraday which we all belong to by their mercy we are uh, able to do some pancharatri kavidhi especially the aspect of deity worship hmm. so all glory to shila prabhupad we seek blessings of his divine grace ac bhakti vedanta swami shila prabhupad we seek his empowerment so that we can serve krishna by we can assist him in his service to lord uh, shri krishna and shrimati radharani Okay, so let's uh, revise what we did yesterday, and then uh, we'll get into today's topic. Mostly, today's topic will take some time to complete because uh, if I have to explain it elaborately, then you know, it will take some more time. We'll see how much time it will take. I'll try myself uh, not to be available till nine thirty for question and answer. Okay, so yesterday we saw these three: deity waking up procedure, bhoga offering procedure, and deity resting procedure. so the first thing that uh, we saw was this panchanga puja abhigamana approaching the altar so we saw uh, or we understood that when we get up we have to first offer obeisances to guru to gauranga to krishna to shrimati radharani chant their names and get up and then go take bath 
and uh, we said that whenever we uh, attend nature's call that is passing stool yes we have to take bath so that we get purified when we go to pass water there is no need to take bath but we can uh, wash our hands and legs properly and rinse our mouth and then after coming out then we uh, wear clean clothes and uh, we put tilak uh, if possible at 12 places on the body or at least to start with on the forehead and then we are then we approach the altar that is abhigamana first thing that we do after approaching the altar is what we do achman so achman is now you take the achman patra and fill the achman patra with water and add few drops of ganga jal and then we do achman so let's do because today i'm supposed to do aarti here online so om keshavaya namaha om narayanaya namaha om madhavaya namaha so yes after doing achman we can you know put water on both the hands you know so that uh, uh, as someone was asking question yesterday what if you know saliva is there on the mouth you know? so something like that since i'm sitting on the chair i'm not used to doing like this <laughs> we have to sit on the ground on the mat keep the achman cup in front and then do then you know it will be you know, properly done after doing achman so now we are ready to do deity worship the first thing that we have to do is uh, ring the bell uh, sorry first switch on the light ring the bell and offer a prayer to the lord saying uh, that oh lord please give up your divine sleep and uh, please open your eyes and cast your auspicious glance on all the three worlds and with this prayer again we ring the bell and we open the altar and then we uh, open the altar by chanting shri shri gandharvika giridhari shriman mahaprabhu ki jai shri shri lakshmi narsimha dev ki jai shri shri panchatatva ki jai jagat guru shri la prabhu pad ki jai so yesterday i forgot to mention one point about getting tulsi maharani so we can get tulsi maharani after opening the altar or before you no know, it's up to us whenever we want to get we can get tulsi maharani and we can keep her you know, on a table you know, nearby and if possible we can cover her uh, the pot with uh, some uh, cloth nice cloth if we can stitch a nice skirt you now we can do that also uh, surely you might have observed in iskon you will see tulsi maharani with nice beautiful skirt and uh, with nice garland so at least this much we can do cover with some cloth so we get tulsi maharani we pay obeisances now and then we start offering prayers we start offering prayers so let me display the manual then it will be very clear and then uh, anyways today you all will get this <clears throat> you all can go through so this is the manual with uh, some sections so here so here is the link for all the ones who are asking for the link so here is the link so you all can click and get the hd photos there are only two varieties as of now i've kept i'll add more and as we said so we are uh, the four uh, basic things that we are recommending is waking up the deities offering full aarti at least uh, in the morning and then offering at least one bhoga or naivedyam and putting deities to rest and then these are the pranam mantra so when we pay obeisances this is what we are supposed to do we have to offer pranam mantra to shila prabhupad to all the guru parampara by chanting this vaishnava pranam mantra then to panchatatva then narsimha dev then gauranga then krishna then shrimati radharani and then we chant hari krishna maha mantra so this is the asma achman procedure that's okay and this is the deity waking up procedure so after we pay obeisances and chant next thing is you now we get up we we take a cloth and then we put achman water on that few drops and we start wiping so what is the sequence of wiping here it's there first lord shri krishna then shrimati radharani then shri gauranga mahaprabhu lakshmi narsimha dev panch tatva guru parampara starting from six goswami to shila prabhupad from top to bottom and then we start offering flowers to all the personalities so basically we are inviting all the personalities you not know, to uh, accept our service that is the aarti that we are going to do so while offering flowers we start from shila prabhupad and then go up so like we start from shila prabhupad till six goswami then we offer flowers to tulsi maharani then panchatatva narsimha dev shri gauranga mahaprabhu shrimati radharani and lord shri krishna so in this way this is the sequence in which we offer flowers so yesterday i forgot to include tulsi maharani in the presentation 
So we can remember after the six Goswamis, after the Guru Parampara, we offer flowers to Tulsi Maharani. So one one flower we can offer. And yesterday we also understood about uh, the importance of offering Tulsi leaves. So after offering flowers, we offer Tulsi leaves dipped in Chandan to Lord Sri Krishna at his lotus feet to Sriman Mahaprabhu. And also, you now here I have not mentioned that, but yesterday I you know, told that secret thing, how to get purified faster. That is with the mood that, oh Lord, I'm more fallen than Jagai and Madhai. In fact, I'm the combined incarnation of Jagai and Madhai. <laughs> please accept this Tulsi leaf in your hand and please deliver me. With that mood, we offer Tulsi leaf in the hand also. And then after that, we change the water, the, the glass of water that uh, remains in the altar. So we change that water. So the water can be transferred to some other glass and that can be distributed as Tirtha to everyone. And uh, no, it can be, the water can be changed and we have to put Tulsi leaf in that. That is very important and cover the glass with the lid. And then after that, we had discussed uh, about the Bhoga offering. Let me go to Bhoga offering. Yeah, Bhoga offering. So yesterday we said that after cooking, that is, uh, the, so this is for the ones who are cooking without onion garlic. For them, they can do, uh, cook the offerings nicely and then arrange. So this plate and bowls which are there, they will be the separate dedicated ones for the Lord. That will not be used by anyone. And also the tumbler or the glass of glass that will be used for offering water along with the bhoga. And also yesterday we said the ones who are uh, <clears throat> cooking uh, non-veg or the ones who are cooking onion garlic in the house, still they also can offer bhoga, but then they have to maintain separate vessels, you know, some two, three vessels for cooking whatever uh, they want to cook and a separate knife also. So after, after arranging the bhoga plate you know, nicely, we put tulsi leaves on that. That's what we have mentioned here. And then, so this is the plate arrangement in the kitchen. Then we go to the altar and then we sprinkle the water on the place where we will be keeping the bhoga plate. And we wipe it with a cloth. Now this is a separate cloth that we keep. So two cloths are needed you know, in the altar. One for wiping all the photos and second for wiping the platform on which uh, this bhoga will be kept. After wiping, we get the bhoga plate and glass. We keep it there. And then you now we sprinkle water from the Achman Patra. Because there might be some contamination which might have uh, creeped in. So by this, we purify. And then we close the altar. So yesterday, many of you were asking that uh, you know, we don't have arrangement for closing the altar. So try your best to make some arrangement. At least curtains can be put. You know, put two hooks on the other side and uh, you know, we can have some curtains by which we can close the altar. Then after closing the altar, we sit down on the mat and then we chant these prayers by ringing the bell. So we have to keep ringing the bell and we have to keep chanting these prayers three, three times. So three times Prabhupada Pranam Mantra, three times Gauranga Pranam Mantra, three times Krishna Pranam Mantra and three times Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. So if we have time, we can sit there and chant one round of Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. And after that is done, we ring the bell, pay obeisances and then we open the altar. Anytime we open the altar or we close the altar, we have to chant the names of the Lordships. Shri Shri Gandharvika Giridhari Shriman Mahaprabhu ki jai, Shri Shri Lakshmi Narasimha Dev ki jai, Shri Shri Panchadatva ki jai, Shri Prabhupada ki jai. So even when we are closing the altar, at that time we have to do this. When we are opening the altar, we have to do this. And then we said now the bhoga that we have offered has become Mahaprasad. So we take it back to the kitchen, transfer it to the respective vessels and wash that. And then we beg forgiveness from the Lord you know, for uh, any offenses that we have committed knowingly or unknowingly. So this was about Boga offering. Now regarding the deity resting procedure. So this is the reverse of the deity waking up procedure. So deity resting, we remove all the flowers and those flowers can be given to the family members to smell because uh, very, very auspicious flowers these are because they have been offered to the Lord. So these can be given. And then uh, now we have to wipe the photos because Chandan would be there at the lotus feet. We have applied Tulasi and uh, you know maybe some dust might be there or whatever. So we take the cloth, we put two, three drops of water and then we wipe the photos in the sequence that we had followed in the morning also. Mm -hmm. Same thing, Lord Krishna, Srimati Radharani, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu or Gauranga Mahaprabhu, Lakshmi Narasimhade, Pancha Tattva. Okay, you know, here I forgot to put uh, Guru Parampara. Yes, then Guru Parampara after this. Till Shula Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. So we do this 
and then we beg forgiveness we take the final darshan of the lord because now the altar is going to get closed and uh, taking the final darshan we offer prayers to the lord that please forgive me you now because of my ignorance i might have committed lot of offenses you now from morning while doing various services but you are all merciful you i'm like your child please forgive me yes and then we offer uh, the we request them to take rest so that oh, oh lord please come to your resting place along with your associates and please rest comfortably for a moment enjoying your past times and then we close the altar we pay our obeisances and switch off the lights in the altar yes so this is the deity resting procedure so and after closing the altar suppose if tulsi maharani is there in the evening suppose you know we have got tulsi maharani again so we can keep it back not to in the veranda or somewhere where the sunlight comes so this is what we saw yesterday anyways this manual will be, will be circulated today uh, i i forgot to add that i'll add that and i'll circulate so we all can go through and revise again because uh, immediately after the class if you revise you'll remember and then next day anyways when you do practicals lord will uh, remind you now what you're supposed to do <laughs> now let's uh, start with today's uh, important topic that is aarti how to do aarti so before we start you know with the aarti procedure so we have to do upadan upadan basically means gathering all the paraphernalia whatever is needed for the aarti so today when we will be seeing various uh, things that uh, are needed for the aarti so we'll keep it ready normally here in uskon whitefield we keep it ready one night before itself so that early in the morning we need not rush so we keep it keep everything ready on the table one night before and then uh, next day morning it's pretty simple you know, go and do the various services okay next so now this is our uh, you know important mantra simple altar and elaborate worship so tulsi maharani has also come today <laughs> yesterday i forgot to get her we saw the asman asman procedure now let's see the aarti procedure now this aarti procedure is a very nice uh, uh, personal service you know, that we are doing all the services are very very personal if a devotee is very intelligent he'll invest a good time you not know, to do all the procedure very very nicely with lot of love and devotion and with the mood that yes i am doing this service for lord shri krishna one of my favorite acharyas in our uh, sampraday is narottam das thakur he sings a very very beautiful song so he, i think day before yesterday i was just say, recollecting this song and then i realized yes this is deity worship song completely you know this deity worship song where he's setting the mood for deity worship so let's see what he's telling this in song he says a very nice song called radha krishna pranamura <clears throat> radha krishna pranamura jugal kisho so narottam das thakur is saying that shri lord shri krishna and shrimati radharani are my pran are my life and soul and then he says jivane marane gati ar nahi mo so he's saying that i'm I, if he, i'm alive or i'm dead it doesn't matter but they are my gati they are my destination that's what i desire and nothing else then he starts describing where are they where are they currently then he says kalendira kule keli kadambaravana where are they kalendira kule keli they are there on the banks of jamuna in vrindavan kadambaravana in the groves of vrindavan and what are they doing there ratana vedira upa bosha bodu jana there is a beautiful ratna singhasan in which both of them are sitting so when we are doing this deity worship this is the first meditation you know that we have that yes my house is vrindavan and here are radha and krishna are sitting on a jeweled throne but then what am i going to do now see after understanding that lordships have come to my house and my house is non different than vrindavan what next thing that i am going to do 
Shama Gauri Ange Dibo Chandanera Gandha. So, what I'm going to do? I'm going to apply Chandan to whom? Sham and Gauri. Sham means uh, Lord Sri Krishna and Gauri is Gaurangi, that is uh, Srimati Radharani. So, I'm going to apply Chandan to them. And Shama Gauri Ange Dibo Chandanera Gandha. Chamara dulabo kabe eri mukha chandra. Those two beautiful faces, that is Srimati Radharani and Lord Sri Krishna, they are like two beautiful moons. And when I'm going to do chamar, when I'm going to fan them, I'm just going to look at their beautiful face, their beautiful form. This is what he's saying. And then he says, <clears throat> Gatiya malati mala dibo doha gale. I'm going to make garlands for them with malati, malati flowers, and then I'm going to give personally, I'm going to put the garland across their necks. And then he says, Adhare tulia dibo karpura tambu. I will offer them bhoga. I'll offer nice preparation and then I'll give them nice you know, preparation of betel nut also. And then he makes a very, very important point. This is the mood of uh, you know, doing deity worship, especially the Aarti procedure that we're going to see. Lalita Vishakha Adi Jata Sakhi Brinda Agyaya Koribo Seva Charanaravinda. So he's saying that I'm not going to do all this by my own. I have no authority. So what am I going to do? I'll go to the Sakhis. You know, I'll go to uh, Lalita Sakhi, Vishaka Sakhi, you know, the friends and, or the servants of Srimati Radharani. I'll go to them. I'll take their permission first. And then I'll do all this service. If they give me permission, I'll do all this service. And then he says, Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu <clears throat> Dasera Nodasa Prathana Koroe Sada Narotamadasa. Then he says, that what is my identity? I am servant of the servant of the servant of Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And this is what is my only desire that may I be able to serve their lordships like this every single day. So this is exactly the mood of deity worship you know, where firstly we meditate that yes, you know, this is Vrindavan and then the lordships have come you know, to this place. They're sitting on this beautiful altar and now what am I supposed to do? I'm supposed to worship them. But can I worship just like that by my own self? No, I have to take permission. And that's why the Guru Parampara is present in the altar. And with their permission, I'll be able to worship them. And with their blessings, I'll be able to offer a nice service. So let's see you know, the procedure of Aarti now, understanding the mood. Now let's get into the procedure. So what are we supposed to do? <clears throat> okay. So... Achman is very much compulsory. So if you have not done Achman, suppose uh, uh, wife has come and she has woken up the deities and now the husband is going to do the Aarti. So he has to do the Achman. Mm -hmm. Keep the Aarti paraphernalia ready on the table. So we'll try to do this one day before itself or no, morning, whenever. No, it's up to you all. Then see, whenever we do any deity worship service, the third point is very important. We stand on Asan. So it can be a mat made up of cloth or the straw or kushagras or whatever. And that is a dedicated mat only for deity worship. Mm -hmm. We'll not sit on it and have prasad. So that is separately only for deity worship. And then we purify all the paraphernalia by sprinkling few drops of water from the Achman Patra. So I've got the Aarti paraphernalia here. This was made for tomorrow. I got it here to show. <laughs> so what we do is we take water Know, from the Achman cup and then sprinkle on the Aarti paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. So this is basically called as purifying the Aarti paraphernalia. Mm -hmm. There are obviously some mantras, etc., etc. 
but we know the maha mantra so we'll chant the maha mantra so whenever whenever we're doing any service throughout we're going to chant maha mantra right from the time we have woken up when we are taking bath when we are wearing clothes when we are doing anything when we have come close to the altar when we are offering flowers throughout no wherever we don't know some prayers or whatever we chant maha mantra so this this chanting of maha mantra will actually uh, no uh, if even if you are missing out something this this will cover up no everything and then suppose we have conch shell in the house the blowing conch shell so we can blow three times the ones who don't know they can learn the ones who know they can blow so it's optional as of now since we are uh, discussing the level 1 deity worship but all the ones who can you know, it's very very nice because when we blow conch shell it is described that the sound that comes from the conch shell that is very very purifying it creates a lot of auspiciousness in the house and uh, all the negative energy that is creeped in at night you know, all of that you know can be removed just by blowing that conch shell because that conch shell is uh, something which is always the there you know with krishna or vishnu he holds that conch shell with him and that conch shell we are actually uh, you know uh, creating the auspiciousness with a similar conch shell yes so all the ones who can yes you know we can do that now next thing is let us get into the procedure now now what are we supposed to do <clears throat> like yesterday i'll try to give a demo in this itself okay so after blowing the conch shell now we have to start the aarti so please remember that uh, whenever you know we are starting the aarti any aarti for that matter first thing that we have to do is we have to offer flower to the lord so it is said that before offering incense agarbatti flower should be offered so when we start aarti the first paraphernalia that we are going to offer is incense or dhupa so what are we supposed to do before that first offer flower so any time any aarti we are doing first we'll offer flower and this flower can be offered you know we can show it to lord shri krishna then shrimati radharani then chaitanya mahaprabhu narsimha dev then panchatatva tulsi maharani yes and then no shad go swami guru parampara till shila prabhupada and then we can keep it you know somewhere uh, on the platform where of the altar so this is the first thing that we'll do when we are starting the aarti this is the first thing now after this oh, every uh, paraphernalia that we are going to offer we'll first show it to shila prabhupada and show it to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu or shri gauranga mahaprabhu because only by the permission of shila prabhupada who is our acharya we can actually proceed to do this service in fact the mood is that they are doing it and we are just the instrument like for example when we write you now we have a pen in the hand and we are writing so pen is just the instrument similarly we are instrument in their hands and we are just doing it you now with their permission on their behalf yes so we are now nowhere independent because we don't have any authority no qualification so it's only because of their permission and their blessings you know we can do so how to do how to take permission that uh, anyways i'll show the first thing that we'll offer in the aarti paraphernalia is dhupa so when it comes to a complete service complete deity worship service five things are very important now if we can offer these five deity worship is complete gandha that is chandan so in the morning itself we have offered gandha second is pushpa so pushpa will offer it multiple times mm-hmm. ganda pushpa dhupa that is incense deepa ghee lamp uh, then naivedya that is uh, bhoga offering mm-hmm. it can be fruits dry fruits or cooked uh, cooked items or whatever so these five if we offer now our worship is complete mm-hmm. this is called as pancha upachara there are 16 upacharas basically and out everything is there and everything is elaborately done in all the iskon temples and uh, narada pancharatra elaborately talks about that but then there are variations also you know? so if someone is not having time to do the 16 upacharas it, it actually takes a long time you know? on ekadashis we do so it easily takes 2 hours you know, to start with first one to go till the end but these five items which are there at the end gandha pushpa dhup deep naivedya they are very very powerful and these are uh, the offerings you know which make the entire worship very very much complete so even if you are not able to offer 16 upacharas no problem these five upacharas are enough so the first thing we offer is incense and look at uh, this statement you know from uh, uh, 
Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, which is quoted from Hari Bhakti Sudodaya, it says that when the devotees smell the good fragrance of the incense which is offered to the deity, they thus become cured of the poisonous effects of material contamination as much as one becomes cured of a snake bite by smelling the prescribed medicinal herb. So when we're offering this incense, when the Lord is accepting that uh, offering, when that smell spreads, that fragrance is spreading throughout the entire house, this is what will happen. So deity worship is very, very important. Everything that we're going to offer you know, to the Lord will create lots of auspicious in the entire house. And so much of negativity that is there, you know, inside, outside, and all that you know, will be removed. So deity worship is very, very important you know, for uh, Grastha devotees and also in the, in the temple. See, that's how when someone comes to the temple, immediately they start feeling a different positivity. Many times when people come to Iskhan Whitefield here for our sessions, you know, they do say that uh, we feel a different vibration here altogether. Why? Deity worship is happening regularly. The chanting of the Hare Krishna Mahamantra is happening regularly. Or singing of the Mahamantra, singing of various Aartis is happening very regularly. Surely vibration will be there. Same positive vibrations one can get in even in one's own house by doing this deity worship very, very nicely. So now, in this deity worship, basically what are we doing? Let's understand the science. So then all the scientific-minded engineers here, they'll, they'll be very much happy to worship the Lord. So we are actually offering the entire material existence to the Lord. Material existence is made up of eight elements. Mm -hmm. Krishna says this in Bhagavad Gita, seventh chapter, um, shloka number four, where he says, Bhumi rapona lovayur khamman or buddhi revacha ahankara mitiyamme bhinna prakriti rashtada. So what are the eight elements? The first one is, uh, he says, Bhumi, earth. Bhumi, apo, that is water. Bhumi, apo, anala, fire. Vayu, air. And come is ether. Then he says, Manaha, mind, buddhi, intelligence, and ahankara, false ego. We are offering these eight elements in service of the Lord when we are offering arati. Let me tell you how. So, how are we engaging our uh, false ego? The first thing that we are doing is we pay obeisance to the Lord. That, oh Lord, I am your servant. So what is false ego? That I am master. That is false ego. But then when we are offering obeisances, we are telling the Lord, Oh Lord, you are the master, I am the servant. That is the first offering that we do early in the morning. That is offering the false ego. Mm -hmm. After that, mind and intelligence. Now to remember this procedure, to remember the prayers, no, obviously the mind and intelligence will be completely engaged. Yes. So we are offering mind and intelligence also. Now, when it comes to offering this earth, water, fire, air, ether, all that you will see, you know, throughout uh, the procedure. So, earth will be offering flowers, will be offering uh, uh, incense, will be offering a cloth, and obviously the bhoga offering is there. So, all that you know comes in the category of earth. And then the next one is earth, water. So, we have offered water in the morning, and in the elaborate arti, you know, again, of water is offered in conch shell. And after that, earth, water, fire. So we are offering ghee lamp. So we are offering fire to the Lord. And after that, uh, fire, then earth, water, fire, air. So we'll be doing chamar. We'll be fanning the Lord. So we're offering air. And come, that is ether or space. So we are blowing the conch shell. And we are ringing the bell. So all that sound that is coming. You know, so all that uh, is an offering in the form of ether. Because sound propagates through ether or space. So in this way, this is the scientific thing in the back in the background. We are offering all the material existence to the Lord. Mm -hmm. Our entire material existence we are offering to the Lord, saying that all this actually constitutes my material existence of Lord. I offer everything at your lotus feet. This is exactly the background or understanding of Arati and deity worship as a whole. The first thing that we are offering in the Arati is incense. When we start doing, so the first thing is incense. Now, so when we offer any, any of the paraphernalia, so now this is the incense. Now, so we purify that again by putting Atman water on the handle. Yes. And then, so with left hand, we ring the bell and with right hand, we offer. Now the ones who are not used to, so now it will be, initially it will be a bit <laughs> difficult because one of my students was telling that this is in linear motion. This is in circular motion. <laughs> How, how, how it will go ahead, yes. So initially it will be like this, 
and then slowly it will become like this. So this is the first thing that we do. Every paraphernalia we're going to put water, that is Achman water and purify. Okay. So let's see how to offer now. Okay. So here is the altar and uh, bell is there and incense is also there. So let's offer. So first, as I said, we'll be taking permission from Shila Prabhupada. So we take the incense and first circle to Shila Prabhupada where we're taking permission. And then we take the incense to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then we take his permission again, you know, by one circle. Yes. And after that, we start worship, start offering it to Lord Shri Krishna. Hmm? Now, sequence of offering is same. We first offer it to Krishna, then Srimati Radharani, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, then Lakshmi Narasimha Dev, then Panchatattva, Tulasi Maharani, then Shat Goswami, and the entire Guru Parampara till Shla Prabhupada. This is the sequence you know, in which uh, we offer. So, how to offer incense? We offer, we go seven clockwise uh, uh, circles. So, seven times we offer. So, we have to count the number. Why this counting is important? Because see, when it comes to training the mind it is and focusing the mind, you know, there should be some engagement. And this counting is very, very important for the same. And obviously, these numbers are auspicious. So it is given in the you know, Narada Pancharatra. So these uh, numbers are uh, very, very important. So we can count. Initially, it will be a count. But after that, once we are used to, you know, then it will be just uh, very much uh, subconsciously. You know, it will happen. So we offer it to Krishna, seven circles, then Srimati Radharani, seven circles, then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, seven circles, and then Narasimha Dev, seven circles, and then Panchatattva, seven circles. Yes. And after that, this incense, we offer it to Tulsi Maharani, three circles. Yes. And then Shad Goswami, three circles, then uh, the entire Guru Parampara, three, three circles to each personality. And when it comes to Shila Prabhupada, we'll be offering seven circles. So basically, there's something called as full arti and three circles. So full arti to the main photo, Radha Krishna and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to Narasimha Dev, Panchadatma and Shila Prabhupada. And three circles to Tulsi Maharani, Shad Goswamis, Jagannath Das Bhavaji Maharaj, Bhakti Vinod Thakur, Gaur Kishore Das Bhavaji Maharaj and Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur. Yes. So this is what we're going to do in all with all the paraphernalia. So this was about uh, the incense. Hope uh, it's clear. What did we do first? We first took permission of Shla Prabhupada by one circle and then blessings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by one circle to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And then we started worshipping Lord Krishna. This is what we need to do. Hope this is clear. Now the next thing that we'll offer after this, after Dhupa comes Deepa. So this is the one week lamp. So in this entire deity worship procedure, we're going to see the simplified form. So we're worshiping with one wick. After this, I'll show the elaborate one also. So one wick, lamp. So we put Achman water on the handle and then we lit the fire or lit the fire and then put the Achman water. Yes. And then start worshiping. Now this ghee lamp is a bit special as compared to all the other paraphernalia. Let's see how. Okay, so now let's offer the ghee lamp. So you see in the PPT, I have mentioned <laughs> everything that is possible. So again, we take permission of Srila Prabhupada by one circle. And then we take permission of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and blessings of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu by uh, you know, one graceful circle. And then we start worshipping Lord Krishna. Now how to offer ghee lamp? Now let's try to understand. So firstly, we offer four circles at the lotus feet of Lord Krishna. If you remember in the first class, I was telling that when we worship the Lord, what happens? Automatically, the entire form of the Lord will be imprinted on the mind. Yes. So this is what will happen. Why? Now we are now we're focusing at lotus feet. Then we focus at the navel or the waist region. So, th so two circles at the waist region. And then three circles at the beautiful lotus face of Lord Krishna. And then after that, seven circles, full body. So seven circles. I'm not doing seven circles. You all can do. So seven circles. So what is the count? Four at the lotus feet, two at the waist or navel, three at the lotus face, and seven full, full body. And after that, same thing for Srimati Radharani. Four, two, 
थ्री एंड सेवन फुल एंड सेम फॉर श्री चैतन्य महाप्रभु फोर टू थ्री एंड सेवन ओके देन नरसिम्ह देव अगेन फोर टू थ्री एंड फुल सेवन एंड दिस वेन कम्स टू पंच तत्व फोटो सो नो वी कैन ऑफर सेवन फुल सर्कल्स और वी कैन डू फोर टू थ्री सेवन ऑल्सो एंड देन वी हैव तुलसी महारानी so what to do with tulsi maharani three circles full full three circles and then when it comes to shad goswamis three circles then entire guru parampara three three circles and when it comes to shila prabhupad 4 2 3 7 now this is what uh, we are supposed to do for shila prabhupad's photo mm. so in this way now we understand that how to offer ghee lamp mm. now this uh, when it comes to ghee <laughs> i remember that there is always a difference that we make when it comes to offering to the lord and what we eat this was again you know back uh, in mumbai when i was there with the, in the with my parents when i was studying so i guess uh, some homa was there in my house uh, grah pravesh was happening so the yagya was happening so i was asked to get uh, ghee so i went to the nearby shop and then i asked him now oh, i want ghee he said for what do you need ghee i said for puja So I said, okay, you take this. So I said, why did you ask like this? He said, we have two varieties of ghee, one for eating, one for puja. So I said, what is the difference between the two? He said that uh, for eating there is a high quality ghee, and for puja it's a low quality ghee. <laughs> this is what he said. <laughs> See, we have to understand this one thing that we have to offer the best thing to the Lord, best thing, whatever best thing we can offer, depending on our capacity. Because best thing for one person might be something else. and best thing for another might be something else so best of the best thing we have to offer i remember when, uh, when i had gone to one relative's house so they were doing something and uh, the child um, was playing and there was a oil bottle a uh, purified oil bottle was there which was used for cooking and that fell down on the ground and uh, instead of wiping they took uh, the oil container of uh, the temple the of their altar and they started putting oil in that i was like what are you doing i said we'll use this tomorrow for worshiping the lord now this is what is the contaminated consciousness of ours instead of offering the best thing to the lord now we see that whatever i will not use i'll offer it to the lord <laughs> this is what is the difference you know in the karma kanda ritual and you know when vaishnavas do worship vaishnavas don't want anything from lord they are not interested in anything they just want to you know, give pleasure to the lord they just want to attain krishna they want to serve krishna and nothing else but when it comes to others when they worship demigods other devi devtas they have a business i'll give you three incense give me return this particular thing i'll give you this flower give me in return i'll offer 21 sweets give me this in return what business are we doing in this world <laughs> are we our main goal is to break the cycle of birth and death and everything else will come automatically when we march towards the ultimate goal hmm? so this is the mood so whenever we are doing deity worship you know whatever we are going through this seminar it's only and only and only for one reason to give pleasure to krishna hmm. to offer whatever we have the best thing in service of krishna to give pleasure to krishna there is no other motive behind this hmm. whatever is needed it is said if we do proper aarti at home proper deity worship at home everything will come all the opulence will come the bhakti will bhakti will grow very nicely in the house there will be so much of auspiciousness and positivity in the entire house and you know my uh, some of my students who have started doing deity worship uh, they were sharing that there is so much of uh, calmness in the house it will obviously it will happen why it will not happen when krishna is accepting our offering personally when he is coming and accepting why will it not happen yes so this is a very important point offer the best thing to the lord this is what i wanted to make the point offer the best thing now after offering the ghee lamp the next thing that will be offering is flowers so when it comes to flowers you know we offer again same thing we take permission from shila prabhupad by one graceful circle and then permission from shri chaitanya mahaprabhu and his blessings by one graceful circle again and then we start worshiping lord krishna so how are we supposed to offer flowers in the plate this is seven circles full and same seven circles to shrimati radharani and then to shri chaitanya mahaprabhu seven circles then narsimha dev seven circles then panch tatva seven circles then this is common three circles to tulsi maharani and three circles to uh, 
uh, Shad Goswamis, then Jagannath Das Bhaji Maharaj and other personalities in the altar, and seven circles to Shila Prabhupada. So basically, this is full arti to all the photos and Tulsi Maharani and uh, the Guru Parampara personalities, three, three circles. And Shila Prabhupada, since he's our spiritual master, uh, we offer the full arti, so that is seven circles. So same thing again, so before we start, now we have the uh, uh, flower plate. Now we put water and then we start offering. Every paraphernalia we put water and then we start offering. Next. Now the ones uh, you know, who are very much uh, having a tight schedule, they can offer till this. That is Gandha, Pushpa, Dhup, Deep, Naivedya. These are the five things. But then, you know, we have two more paraphernalia. You know, very, very nice seva. You know, this is. This is called as Chamar seva. That uh, is there. So this is the whisk. You know, yak tail whisk. So this can be offered to the Lord. So we have to wave this seven times. You know, like we're fanning the Lord. You know, and seven, seven times to Srimati Radharani. But before that, you now one time we wave it to Srila Prabhupada and to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to take permission. And then we start worshipping. Seven times to Krishna. Seven times to Srimati Radharani. Then seven times to Narsimadev, seven times to Panchatattva, three times to Tulsi Maharani, then three times to each personalities and seven times to Srila Prabhupada. Mm -hmm. So this is a very uh, special seva that is done in all the temples, all the Vishnu temples. Uh, we had gone to Udupi, Udupi Krishna. There they were doing Chamar seva for half an hour, more than half an hour they're doing Chamar seva with two hands. And it was so wonderful to see that. Yes. So Chamar, we'll get it, uh, you know, in anywhere, especially in Dham when we go, we'll get it. So this is the chamber, and we can hold, again, same thing, put water on the handle and then we can start offering. Yes. So we just fan it. So this is the chamber seva. Mm -hmm. After that, something called as Vajana seva, that is offering peacock feather fan. Mm -hmm. So this is the one. So same thing again. So we have to just, fan, once we fan Srila Prabhupada and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, we take their permission. Seven times to Krishna, seven times to Srimati Radharani, seven times to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, seven times to Narsimadev, seven times to Panchatattva, three times to Brinda Devi or Tulsi Maharani, and three times, three, three times to each personalities, and three times to Shla, oh, sorry, seven times to Srila Prabhupada. So this is Vajana Seva. So in total, what is the summary? Summary is this. So this is the sequence of offering. So before we start this, we offer one flower. That's what. That's how the arti starts. And then after that, we offer three incense sticks. So incense should be in odd numbers and three is the minimum. So three incense sticks, seven to the full body, then ghee lamp. So ghee lamp has this, four at the lotus feet, and then uh, two at the navel or waist, three at the face and seven full body. When it comes to flowers in the plate, seven full body and charmer and peacock feather seven times. Now we have to wave, no, graceful, gracefully. Now, when it comes to winters, normally we don't use peacock fan. Uh, in summers, we use peacock fan also. Mm -hmm. So basically it's like, uh, if it's very, very cold, we don't offer peacock feather, peacock fan, but other paraphernalia we can offer. And how do we end the arti? So this is how we end the arti. We blow the conch three times. We started the arti with, by blowing the conch three times. We end the arti by blowing the conch three times. Then pay obeisances to the Lord. And after paying obeisances, we get up and we beg forgiveness. Because now in this arti, many things can happen. Our mind might go here and there. We might forget the count what we are doing. And uh, I clearly remember this was Janmashtami a uh, couple of years back. And full night we were awake because there were a lot of services to do. And next day morning, uh, I was doing Mangal Arti, you know, this yes, Arti Seva I was doing. Now I was so sleepy, I was offering incense. And I, after some time, I was not understanding which personality I'm offering incense. I got really terrified after that. Then I came back to my senses and started offering with focus. So this will happen you know, at times when we are you know, very, um, uh, what to say, uh, not having proper rest or whatever. So many mistakes will happen. So at the end of every seva, we beg forgiveness. That, oh Lord, please forgive me for all the mistakes and all the offenses that I've committed knowingly and unknowingly. So here completes the basic and complete arati procedure. Now there is something called as elaborate arati procedure. By the way, 
if you do this properly it will take max 15 minutes not more than that in fact it will be less than 15 minutes if you properly follow you know what was told so just 15 minutes and this entire aarti will be completed very very properly following the entire procedure now there is something called as elaborate aarti you know, that uh, we do in iskon and all the devote many devotees might be already doing it so and uh, others you know who are just beginners they can do it on weekends or on special occasions so let's see the elaborate uh, aarti procedure so not much difference same thing only so three incense sticks we are offering seven times to the body now here instead of one wick ghee lamp we offer five wick ghee lamp so here is the five wick ghee lamp you know which uh, we are we can offer five wick ghee lamp now your wicks need not be this big it can be small also since it's a temple we have big wicks and same thing 4 2 3 7 so that's what is the count you know for the ghee lamp any time we offer ghee lamp this will be the count so five wick ghee lamp then after that uh, water in the conch and handkerchief these are the two different things but flowers chamar pick up further we anyway saw so previously we were offering five items now we are offering seven items you know in this uh, elaborate procedure so ghee lamp is same now we uh, take permission from shila prabhupad and then chaitanya mahaprabhu and then 4 2 3 7 yes so i am sure now the numbers will be bahited by everyone again for adharani 4 2 3 7 4 chaitanya mahaprabhu 4 2 3 7 then narsimha dev 4 2 3 7 and panchatatva either 7 or we can do 4 2 3 7 also and tulsi maharani three times and then we have uh, you know shad goswami guru parampara three three times and shila prabhupad 4 2 3 7 hmm. so this is the count and in the slides i have put now where all to offer is 4 2 yes and after this now two more paraphernalia now this conch needs a special attention how to offer water in the conch <clears throat> so where is so we have you know a uh what to say a container which has water we pour that in the conch yes and now when we are offering we offer it to each personality now suppose you know i am offering it to krishna so i offer it to krishna i'll tell how to offer after offering it to krishna we pour a little water from the conch you know into the container and then we offer it to shrimati radharani and again you know we pour a little bit from the into the container so like this for each personality we do and then you know that particular offering of conch will be done how to offer the water in the conch let me explain that now so we have taken the water in the conch it is ready and then now we offer take permission from shila prabhupad shri chaitanya mahaprabhu with one one circle and then now we offer it to krishna now this conch offering is three times at the face of krishna see when you are offering at the different body parts we have to observe the body parts very very carefully yes and then the entire body seven times same thing for shrimati radharani three and then we pour it in the glass or pour it in the container then three times to shrimati radharani at the face full seven times and then we pour little water in the container chaitanya mahaprabhu three times at the face full body and then we pour it in the container same thing for narsimha dev three and seven pour it into the container panchatatva we can do full seven circles and pour it into the container tulsi maharani three times pour it into the container then shad goswami guru parampara each personality we can offer three three times and then pour it into the container and shila prabhupad three times circles at the face four sorry seven full circles and then pour it into the container yes this is what is the offering of conch so as i already said every paraphernalia that going to take we take and then we pour uh, the archman water and then we start offering that will be common so i'm not repeating that the last paraphernalia that we'll see for today is the handkerchief you now that we are offering or the cloth that we offer so so many times people ask how to fold the handkerchief let me let me show that so we have this so we fold it so this is the square and then we make it a rectangle and a smaller rectangle sorry smaller triangle and we hold the handkerchief like this yes and we start offering 
Now, how to offer the handkerchief? Now, this comes in elaborate worship. Now, it's optional for all the newcomers, but I'm just showing it so that you know it. So, we take permission from Srila Prabhupada and then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and seven full circles to Lord Krishna, seven full circles to Srimati Radharani, seven full circles to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, seven full circles to Narsimadev, Panchatattva, three circles to Tulsi Maharani, three three circles to each personalities in the Guru Parampara and seven circles to Srila Prabhupada. Yes. So this is what is the handkerchief offering now that we did. So in summary, this is the elaborate worship, the elaborate arti. So we offer incense seven times to the full body. And after that, five times the ghee wick lamp. Sorry, the five wick ghee lamp, four, two, three, seven. That is given. Four at the feet, two at the waist or navel, three at the face, seven at the entire body. Now water in the conch, three at the lotus face and the entire body seven times. Handkerchief, seven times full. Flower, seven times full. Chamar and peacock fan, that's pretty simple. Fan it seven, seven times. Now, if you see the entire stuff, only the lamp and the conch you know, has a bit of difference. That's it. Apart from that, everything is just offering seven, seven times. It's simple. So this is the entire Aarti procedure. Now it is said that whenever Aarti happens, whenever the Aarti performance is going on, at that time, all the Devi Devtas, they come to that particular place to witness the Aarti. We might not be able to see them, but they are present. Yes. So after offering it to Srila Prabhupada, now we have to show, now we have to turn behind and then we have to show it to everyone. I mean, maybe the place will be empty, but still we have to you know, just wave it once. Or like, for example, if you're offering incense, so my altar is behind, say, so I you know, just show it to everyone behind and then you know, I keep it back, whatever. So whatever, in, whatever paraphernalia we're offering, we, after showing it to Srila Prabhupada, at the end, we offer it to everyone else who are present, you know, who are attending the Aarti, who are invisible personalities. And obviously there'll be some visible personalities. That is all your family members. You know, they'll be present. So we can show it to them and then you know, we can keep it. Now, when it comes to Aarti, we can go and give it to everyone. Some other person can come and you know, they can take the Aarti. They can give it to everyone and you know, everyone can take the Aarti. Flowers, everyone can smell. And the water that is there that we offered, we can sprinkle it on everyone. With the cons that we offered, we can sprinkle it on everyone. So in this way, the entire Aarti procedure completes. At the end, when we blow the con shell, pay obeisance and offer prayers. So this is the entire Aarti procedure. Yes. Now two more things I want to speak and then we'll end for today. So we can sing Narsimha Aarti. After doing this entire Aarti procedure, we can sit down and sing Narsimha Aarti. So all the ones who don't know, they can play the audio. And with time anyways, you know, for one week you chant, you know, you'll get to know very, very beautiful prayer this is. And then comes a very important worship that is called Tulsi worship. This is again from Nectar of Devotion, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. It says that let me offer my respectful obeisances onto the Tulsi tree, which can immediately vanquish volumes of sinful activities. Simply by seeing or touching this tree, one can become relieved from all distress and diseases. Simply by offering obeisances to and pouring water on the Tulsi tree, one can become freed from the fear of being sent to the court of Yamaraj. As simple as that. Tulsi Maharani, now who is dear associate of Lord Krishna, has personally appeared from Goloka Vrindavan here to our place. See, Vrindavan is called as Vrindavan. It is not called as Krishnavan, Radhavan or something like that. It is called as Vrindavan. Vrindavan means Tulsi Maharani. So she is the one you know, who uh, is like a uh, supervisor there. You know, she takes care of all the services in Vrindavan. She is the one you know, who is a pure devotee of Lord Krishna. And if she blesses us, you now we'll grow very, very fast in Krishna consciousness. So what is the seva that we can do for Tulsi Maharani? I mentioned this in the manual. Let me show that. Okay. So, Aarti procedure, everything is given here. You all can go through. Uh, whatever I've explained, all that is there. And these are the different uh, Vaishnava bhajans that we can sing while doing the Aarti. Here is the Tulsi worship. So, we all can pay obeisance to Tulsi Maharani and chant this prayer. Brindayai Tulsi Devyai Priyayai Keshavasyacha 
Vishnu Bhakti Prati Devi Satyavatye Namo Namaha. So three times we can chant this prayer. And then you know, we can sing this entire very, very beautiful arti that is there. And suppose we don't have time for you know, singing all this, no problem. Pay obeisance. You don't know the prayer, you still uh, you know, have time to learn it, no problem. Pay obeisance and uh, you can say Tulsi Maharani Ki Jai and get up. And then we can circambulate Tulsi Maharani four times. So four times with the entire family, we can circambulate Tulsi Maharani, do Parikrama. And what we can do is, we can offer water from Achman Patra three times to Tulsi Maharani. And then without fail, touch the leaves of Tulsi Maharani and take some dust from the pot and apply it on the forehead. Why we do that? As I read, simply by seeing or touching this tree, one can become relieved from all distress, diseases, etc. Simply by offering obeisances to and pouring water on Tulsi tree, one can become freed from being sent to court of Yamaraj. So these are the different things that Lord Krishna has given to all of us. Very simple procedures, everything is. Nothing great about this. But just by doing the simple, simple things, we'll be saved from greatest disaster you know, that will come in our life. Now, when the altar is open, you now we need to make sure that some things we should avoid. So I have summarized this. Very, very important uh, points which we can uh, note. What we shouldn't do when the open, when the altar is open. Yes, this is the one. So spreading the legs and lying down before the altar, that is not uh, uh, that is not good. Then we shouldn't show our back to the altar. There's no question of fighting in front of the altar, talking anything nonsense becoming angry, chastising, blaspheming, using harsh words, not allowed. And when we offer food to the Lord, we cannot offer those food you know, which has already been uh, uh, eaten by someone or we have given it to someone. You know, it has to be freshly cooked food that we offer. When the altar is open, we cannot eat or drink in front of the altar. So we have to close the altar before we take our breakfast, lunch, dinner, whatever. Then to start worshipping, Without having washed one's feet, hands and mouth after eating food is not correct. So once we eat food, say uh, we are doing deity resting. So we are suppose we are doing it after dinner. So we have to wash our hands, legs properly, rinse our mouth properly so that no food particle is there in the mouth. Then go and uh, do the deity resting. To worship the deity after seeing a dead body or after returning from a crematorium no, is not good. We have to take, immediately take bath and then we have to uh, do the needful. That is uh, whatever worship we are supposed to do. Especially when we see the dead body or whatever, we have to take such a snan that is called as taking bath with the clothes. We just go and stand under the shower with the clothes and then we change. So in this way, these are the few things. Actually, there are 64 <laughs> different things to avoid. But then I had all the important ones and I put here, you know, which people might do at home. So I thought these are the important ones which we can follow. So in summary, now, how much time it will take for doing all this? Because the bald person has explained for one and a half hours for three days. So how much time is going to take? So early morning, it will take max five to 10 minutes for a deity waking up service. For doing arati, it takes 15 minutes max. Even elaborate arati takes 15 minutes. You know, we do it in 15 minutes here. 15 to 20 minutes max. Offering bhoga, 10 minutes max. And deity resting, you know, another 10 minutes or you know, 5 minutes. So if we calculate the entire thing, not more than one hour. Mm -hmm. uh, everything will finish in 45 minutes also. You know, if we uh, get acquainted with all the procedures, whatever is there. So in this way, you know, entire day, we are nicely engaged. And four activities only we are doing. Deity waking up service, offering one arati, boga offering, and finally the fourth one, that is deity resting. So just by doing this every single day, you know, take it from me, it's a challenge from me. If you do it every single day, there'll be lots and lots of auspiciousness in the entire house. More than auspiciousness, I would say, our devotional service will be very, very intense. Our chanting will be very nice when we sit in front of the altar and chant. We can you know, take darshan of the Lord and we can keep chanting. And uh, every day, everyone will get to have prasadam. And prasadam is very, very purifying just by putting those remnants in the mouth the person will get completely purified every single day that can be done 
and then we are smelling the flowers we are you know accepting the tulsi leaves which are offered to the lord and then uh, the incense fragrance is there around what else is needed in the house <laughs> and the entire house is coming together all the family members are coming together for the arati now that is another benefit that is there so in this way now i have covered all the four aspects and all the details to the core now whatever was supposed to be covered i don't know if i missed something here and there if you know with questions maybe i can answer those now if i missed something here and there maybe i can uh, cover that up when it comes to the questions so i'm sure on all the ones uh, who are not doing maybe they can take it up and all the ones who are doing please make sure you meticulously follow the procedure that is given and the mood is this that i want to give pleasure to krishna and i want to assist my spiritual master shula prabhupad in serving lord krishna i am just an instrument with this mood you now we can do the deity worship so i end here please go ahead and ask questions i am there till 9:30 to i take your questions today okay can we get prayer that you sing at the beginning in your recorded voice om agyanti mirandasya Oh, that one yeah you can get it so that's a very common prayer we you know chant puja room cleaning when we should do i clean the puja room along with house cleaning after that i will take a take bath and do puja see whenever we enter puja room we should have taken bath so after taking bath you can do we are familiar with shila prabhupad could you please introduce us other gurus so that we connect to them when we worship so uh, proper disciples are there but then as of now uh, you know since if we are not there at 16 rounds and still not uh, up to the mark then we can just uh, stick to shila prabhupad as of now and with time anyways you now our superiors will guide us you know, who are the other gurus who are present in this con you know, we can uh, approach them take their shelter why odd number of incense so these are some auspicious numbers you know, I, there is no specific reason for why maybe narad muni can tell us better but the numbers is very clear those numbers are very, are very important you know, so that we focus you know, when we are doing aarti but numbers we cannot decide what numbers we want to do what is given those numbers we have to follow i am unable to sit on the floor sure to physical challenge i sit on chair and do the worship yeah no problem we can do that see whenever there is some physical problem we have to be practical you now we have to under, we have to do whatever is needful i have nandi handle for bell yeah it's okay we also have nandi handle here in uh, white field is called aarti should be before or after bhoga so it's like we wake up the deities we do the aarti and we offer the bhoga but then suppose the person is getting late for the office no problem we can offer bhoga first and do the aarti later there is no problem different conch for blowing and offering water yeah so when it comes to the blowing conch no that will so this will not be covered for the blowing conch no it will be open there will be a hole here and for offering it will be closed then the water doesn't fall from here right can we prepare and offer bhoga to deities before starting our rounds yeah we can do that there is no problem but then uh, if possible uh, you know we uh, we can chant our rounds maybe at least one or two rounds before starting the cooking no that will be good but then you no know, we have to see whatever is practical because at times maybe the husband is getting late kids are getting late we have to cook first and then so accordingly whatever is there we can do no problem what are we singing during aarti circling so initially you know we can just chant the maha mantra the hari krishna maha mantra we can sing different tunes you know which are available and uh, there are prayers which i have given in the manual so the first prayer is when we do the aarti we sing samsara dava nalalila nalalida loka it's a very beautiful uh, song vaishnav song very deep meaning you not know, to the song also so we can get all that on youtube you know it's available many many scon devotees have sung that song then uh, narsimha aarti we sing and tulsi aarti we sing so till we by heart all these we can play the audio and uh, if if that is also becoming difficult we can sing the hari krishna maha mantra in different tunes so that is also okay. taking a bath before worshiping is to take a head bath every day or a normal bath for mata ji it will be difficult to take head bath every day 
so it can be a normal bath and once in a while you know, whatever is a schedule that you follow for head bath you all can do that so normally when mata ji's come to the altar for worship they have to cover the head so that is very important so i was just reading the manual today afternoon so the mata ji's have to cover the head you know when they come to uh, worship cover the head with some cloth my kid 7 years old he will take the food before the offering can we offer that food no it cannot be offered be it 7 years or be it 3 years so you have to somehow be very very fast and quickly go and offer <laughs> okay next after bhoga bhoga should be there before aarti after bhoga or bhoga okay so it depends whatever is uh, practical for you, you can do that but this can be the sequence where we wake up the deities we do the aarti and then we offer the bhoga you mentioned three incense sticks i use uh, loban dhup which is thick and big so is one sufficient no the number is three we have to use incense sticks so what you're talking about is dhup so dhup is used for different purpose so incense we have to use sticks we have to use you know for offering can we open the altar to show our deities to guests um so devotees do that i have seen you know opening but uh, it's it's up to us we can take uh, the call at that time now suppose anyways for bhoga offering in the afternoon anyways will open so if that is the time when they have come we can open and show but ideally if uh, it is a odd time no better not to open like in you know, afternoon 3 o'clock etc so that's not good you know, to open so lord should also have his own privacy for some time <laughs> we shouldn't disturb him. mantra meditation to be completed before deity worship or within deity worship procedure so mantra meditation is an exclusive stuff that is not uh, anywhere uh, we cannot merge that in you know, with the deity worship obviously we keep chanting maha mantra when we are doing deity worship but it's up to us you not know, to do it before or after so like for example many of you would like to chant the round before aarti so what we can do is open the altar i mean follow the deity waking up procedure and after doing all that then sit in front of the altar complete your mantra meditation chanting of the hari krishna maha mantra and then you can start with the aarti worshiping tulsi maharani outside is not acceptable uh theek hai no problem we can do but you know we can invite tulsi maharani inside the house she is a pure devotee now that always be greedy you know how can i get spiritual entities in my house be always greedy you know in that way so we can try getting inside that's very nice what about sandhya aarti procedure is it same like mangala aarti hope there is a there are different play, prayers so at home we need not uh, focus so much on sandhya aarti we can maybe offer incense you know, three incense we can offer that's it so uh, more than that uh, i am not recommending because it will be difficult to do you know the same things it will be difficult so four things as i uh, you know recommended you know, it's not my recommendation it's recommendation of the senior devotees here so waking up of the deities one aarti in the morning at least one bhoga offering and evening deity resting in between it's your choice now what you want to do and uh, like you want to offer more than one bhoga you can offer and evening i would not recommend the full aarti that is there you can just offer incense and all the family members can come together sit and do some kirtan the hari krishna kirtan or sit and do mantra meditation something can be done in the evening i have a puja room while offering bhoga should i come out close the door and recite the prayers yeah that is that will be good that is what is recommended should we shift tulsi maharani to altar and again outside for sunlight yes that's how it is so now we can have a dedicated uh, a table a small table or stool like structure that is there uh, and on that you now we can keep tulsi maharani we bring her in the morning when we wake up the deities and then when we close the altar we keep her outside evening it's up to us if we want to bring her again in the evening we can bring but after again closing the altar we have to keep her outside why ch is written as c in its context please give an example which ch you are talking when we show the paraphernalia to the visitors we turn back so that's how so suppose my altar is here so i turn this much and then show so i'm not turning full back like this if suppose my altar is here i'm not turning like this to show i'm just suppose my altar is here i turn like this and show here 
And again, I turn this side and show. So I'm not turning full back. Something like that. What can we do? <laughs> I'm doing all circus sitting here. <laughs> How I wish it was a physical session. What can we do if Lord Krishna pick appear in the house on the eating plate? What does it mean? It happened in my auntie home. I don't know how it appears in the plate. Uh, so if it's appearing in the plate, no problem. Just pray to Krishna and continue eating. All the four aspects. Can we get your notes for deity worship? And I'm going to send the manual. So you can just uh, use that and do that. Whatever is there. May we know what's the significance of offering handkerchief? So uh, it's like uh, when you're offering water, it's, it's, it's almost like giving a bath. And then we you know, use the handkerchief for you know, wiping. And another thing is handkerchief acts like a gift also where we are you know, giving a gift to the Lord. So these are the two things that are mentioned in Shastra. What is the resting time? You can decide the resting time. So it can be there around 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. You can decide. So timing, see, I'm not talking about timings. Timings, you all can decide when you want to do wake up the deities in the morning and whatever. And it not be a very fixed time also. You can keep a slot, say 6 to 7 o'clock. In between, I'll do the deity waking up in the morning. I'll do the Aarti in this time. I'll do the Bhoga offering in this time. So in the house, there is no fixed time as such. But then we can keep uh, you know, a time slot. In this slot, I'll try to do. You know, that much we can do. Can we do waking up of the deities and Aarti after our chanting or before chanting? It's up to you. You decide whatever is okay. Who are Panchatattva? So Panchatattva are uh, the different... Uh, incarnations of the Lord, like Sri Krishna Chaitanya, that is uh, Lord Krishna himself you know, has come in the form of uh, you know, this personality, Lord Sri Krishna Chaitanya, to give the Mahamantra. Balram comes as Nityananda Prabhu. Sri Krishna Chaitanya, Prabhu Nityananda. So it is said, Brajendra Nandan Jai Sachi Sutta Hoilo Se Balram Hoilo Nitai. So Brajendra Nandan, that is Lord Krishna, he came down as Sachi Sutta, the son of Sachi Mata, that is Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Balram Hoilo Nitai, Balram became Nitai. And then we have Advaita Charya. Advaita Charya is uh, you know, the combined incarnation of Sadashiv and Mahavishnu. And then we have Gadadhar Pandit, who is incarnation of uh, Srimati Radharani. And Srivas Thakur is uh, the incarnation of Narada Muni. So these are the five personalities who came you know, 530 years back just to give us the Mahamantra and teach us how to do devotional service. So they are the Panchatattva. How can we get all the PDF of this session? Oh, so you have to be there in one of the groups. So please join the group. No, it, it will be given in one of the groups. And maybe tomorrow uh, I'll try to update in the YouTube uh, description box also. But in every group, we are circulating all the PPTs and PDFs. Why do we offer handkerchief? Can we use lamps in silver, South Indian type? What to do if I don't have Tulsi plant? So three questions. So handkerchief I answered. Now it's an offering that we're giving, wiping the Lord, or we're giving it as a gift. And can we use lamps in silver, South Indian type? Yeah, we can use, not a problem. What to do if I don't have Tulsi plant? Please get one. Now that's very important to have Tulsi plant. And many keeps saying that sunlight doesn't come to the house. Please keep it on the terrace. Now Tulsi Maharani can be kept on terrace and we can keep getting her inside. I am keeping my mind open to change in the new procedure you have been teaching us. My pleasure. <laughs> my pleasure to know this. Can you please share procedure document link? Uh, please be there in one of the groups, either Mantra Meditation or uh, Gita Course groups or any groups of ISKCON Whitefield or ask your mentors if they're connected to ISKCON Whitefield, they'll pass it on. So today or max tomorrow, this PDF will be sent to all the groups. And uh, maybe in next one or two days, it will be uploaded in our website also, iskonwhitefield.org. So you can get it from there also. Boga, yeah, we can offer anytime. No, we can offer in the evening also, not a problem. But if you missed yesterday's session, please see the yesterday's session. Can the Tulsi Maharani be kept outside for sunlight? Yeah, yeah, we have to keep. That's but obvious. We get her in the morning, keep it back after doing the afternoon. Should we take bath in the evening while we go for resting the deities? If you are clean, no problem. No, suppose uh, in the entire day you have not gone to pass tool after the morning one, no problem. If you have gone, then you have to take bath. 
take bath and then you have to do the rest but if you have not gone no problem you know you can just wash your hands legs face and then do achman and go ahead and do the service should we put the deities to rest in the morning itself or should we repeat the complete aarti in evening also and put the deities to rest at the end of the day so just in the morning we do the aarti and then suppose we are closing the altar say uh, we are closing the altar around 11 o'clock in the morning so for the afternoon rest so we just close the altar and uh, we just uh, offer the prayer and after that uh, in the evening we just open the altar and suppose we want to offer incense we can offer incense or we want to sing we can sing and we can offer bhoga if we are planning to in the evening also so that much we can do and suppose we are not planning anything just open the altar pay obeisances in the evening and after that do the deity resting at night and just close the altar so that's it so there's not much you know to do in the evening while offering tulsi it should be offered with chandan or only tulsi so we can offer with chandan that's very much recommended you have that uh, stone on which you grind the chand the wood sandalwood that that's what we have to do grind and then dip the tulsi leaf and offer what to do with flowers after aarti can women put them in their head yeah that's allowed we can do that where can we buy conch chamber and other items which you said can we buy yeah you'll get it uh, in iskon you i guess some of them you'll get it here at iskon white field you can order it online also we have so many stores uh, we can order it online also should we apply tilak after wiping the photos on the forehead you're saying so uh, that's not needed no we can just apply uh, chandan at the lotus feet no that's enough we don't need to light diyas in evening we usually light the lamp so this lighting the diya is up to you now you keep the two lamps and you can you know light in the morning also before aarti you can light the lamps in the evening also you can light it's up to you that's optional is gaur aarti not done in the morning only in the evening yeah gaur aarti is done in the evening because that's what happens in uh, the past time of uh, gauranga mahaprabhu so it it's happened it happens in the evening how to do step by step progress for deity worship for a new comer because all these instructions to start at once might be a little difficult at the beginning uh, actually the description which i gave was very elaborate i was giving uh, you know all the details of it i was talking about the background and past times and songs and other things but when you actually start doing you know it will hardly take some time to learn very very quickly we can learn not a problem so uh, we can in fact i would say that start everything start everything it will not take much time to learn maybe for a week we might struggle to understand how many times circle and what to do etc but trust me after one week of sincere endeavor after that it will be all makkhan it will be easy we can just do it very easily but the thing is if we because this is the rock bottom thing i have told if you do something below this mind will trick mind will say chalo and let's keep doing this only let's not <laughs> go ahead <laughs> so let's start with that no the actual thing where that is spoken so then it will be easy what is the procedure for evening aarti so there is no uh, as procedure as such just offer incense in the same way whatever paraphernalia you are offering just go through the manual offer it in the same way after opening the altar oh. after opening the altar during waking up the lord are there any timing when we should close the altar uh, it's up to you that also you can decide there is no hard and fast rule in the house suppose you want to offer lunch also and close the altar you can do that or uh, you can close it you know after uh, some time and uh, suppose everyone is going to have break for say around 9 o'clock 10 o'clock you can close the altar at that time or 11 o'clock 12 o'clock any time you can close the altar thank you for preparing it's my pleasure so if if any of you all have uh, felt that uh, this seminar of 3 days was helpful and uh, this will take you closer to krishna now i request all of you all that please uh, offer your blessings to me and please pray for me so i have got a sincere desire you know to attain krishna this very lifetime and this will be possible only when all sincere devotees like you pray for me so this is what uh, yeah this is what is my dakshina <laughs> if you can offer prayers for me and please give your blessings cooking bhoga should be done before doing aarti uh you can do the aarti go cook the bhoga then offer 
or cook the bhoga then do the aarti no problem you can you can decide just make sure these four things are done in the day or whatever is thought because of office work we can cook bhoga without taking bath can we cook no 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 it's not possible whatever office work or whatever it is now we go take bath first and then we cook and then only we offer there is no question of entering kitchen without taking bath every kitchen is shrimati radharani's kitchen and we cannot enter radharani's kitchen without taking bath uh, this is a very uh, 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 what to say uh, some uh, culture that has come where we just enter the kitchen without taking bath that's not correct no? well uh, that that will anyways not give any benefit to anyone just the stomach will get filled but the consciousness will keep deteriorating every day because of that so better we take bath quickly and go and do the needful whatever is there oh i just missed the sequence ah got it okay in door of puja room if space is there like decoration space which is commonly seen should we put screen and cover completely or is it okay uh okay you are talking about the bell and other things which hang i i think it should be okay if no one is going and peeping inside that but then uh, if possible we can cover it we can have a curtains inside uh, and then we can have the door outside so it's locked down and the plant in the house will have few leaves so can we cut leaf into small pieces and use yeah we can do that that's okay when radharani's expansion of krishna why shouldn't we offer tulasi to radharani because radharani shakti of krishna she is not krishna mm-hmm. so tulasi is offered only to vishnu tattva or not shakti tattva mm-hmm. so radharani and uh, the guru parampara and all of them belong to this class so shakti tattva and jiva tattva so we don't offer it to them can all foods cooked in the house without onion garlic and mushroom be offered as bhoga if it is spicy or bitter yeah it's it's okay we can offer can offer but this cooking should happen you know every day then we can offer no that is good or once in a while we are doing then we can have some separate vessels and we can cook in that and offer in everyone's house lot of deity photos will be present which comes from generations so if we should restrict it to few photos what should we do with the remaining photos so a common procedure that people follow is uh, we can keep those photos now we can request them uh, to uh, request them that this is what is the procedure that i am to follow and do justice you now to the time that i have so i request you to uh, you know please accept the offerings through lord shri krishna because all of them all the devi devtas they accept uh, the prasad that lord shri krishna gives so we can take all those photos we can keep it in the shelf you no know, some other shelf or keep it in some rack or if you want to uh, you know uh, float it in the water we can do so we can remove the frame and take the paper that is there or the photo and we can float it in the water also mm-hmm. that is also possible but suppose you want to still continue worshiping or suppose you are very much attached so you can have a separate place in the kitchen or somewhere and then the flowers which are offered to lord krishna you can you know, offer that to the devi devtas there but ideally you no know, time will be very less so better to maintain one altar and then we can keep them in some shelf or somewhere you know, safely healthcare workers will be exposed to death every day so should they take bath and then see god uh, if yeah if if anyone is seeing dead body it's you know, we have to take bath you know and then we have to go take darshan in fact see as soon as we see dead body outside you have to come inside the house and immediately you have to take bath because there are very scientific reasons also because we have seen that and we might keep thinking about it and a lot of negativity will creep in so when we take bath there is a lot of relief we will forget most of it my grandmother has passed away yesterday after 15 days rituals can i take up all this process or not until a year no we can we can do after sutak we can start so if suppose your sutak period is 15 days then you can start not a problem who given the aarti procedure at the first time it was narada muni narada muni was given tulsi aarti need need to be done in front of the deity 
Oh, that's a good question. So we can, uh, when suppose we want to do Tulsi Pradakshina, so at that time we can uh, close the altar, do Tulsi Pradakshina, and then open the altar. That's a good question. I forgot to talk about this. Where are you sending the manual? In all the groups, in all the groups which are connected to ISKCON, Whitefield will be sending this. Can we wake up deities, offer obeisance, perform archman, do mantra meditation, and do arti? Yes, that's a good sequence. But perform archman is before, and then all that. Yes. I hope you just put the things and not in the sequence. I have two Tulsi plants, one for puja, one for taking leaves. Okay. But the ones which are worshipping from that also, we can take leaves. That's a seva that we do. No, take Tulsi leaves and offer. That's a seva. What is Sandhyarthi timing according to ISKCON? So it's around between 6.30 to 7. I don't see Ganesha being offered in the procedure. Did I miss uh, it? Ganda, sorry. Ganda being offered. Ganda we offered at the start, right? At the deity wake-up procedure. We uh, offered flowers. And then we offered Chandan. And then we Chandan with the Tulasi. And then we stuck at the lotus feet. That's the Chandan offering, Ganda. Is the waking up Deity procedure, Aarti and Boga offering all has to be done sequentially at one time or can be done part by part based on the... Yeah, that you can decide, as I said. That you can decide. Now, there is no uh, hard and fast rule to complete everything together. But normally, all this will happen in the morning itself, you know, where we wake up the deities, do Aarti and, what, and uh, the food can be offered, the Boga can be offered. So it will get done in one stretch. Normally, I've seen devotees doing in one stretch, but then... You want to do it part by part, initially it's up to you. We can do, not a problem. After Ghi Diya Aarti done, should we need to turn off Diya? Uh, so that lamp will be kept out. We don't keep the offered lamp inside the altar. We keep it outside. So we can anytime close the altar. We don't uh, uh, extinguish the fire by ourselves. That will happen naturally. So we shouldn't uh, do that. So that's considered inauspicious. Can we keep the altar open after our morning prayers and close the altar in the afternoon for resting time? Yeah, we can do that. Afternoon, we can close. Can we offer some same handkerchief every day or how frequently to change it? So we offer in the morning We are, and every all the paraphernalia, including the cloth, we you know, wash it in the evening. And then we dry it and next day morning you can use that. It's up to us. We can uh, change it uh, you know, on the special festivals or ekadashis. Not up to us whenever we want to change. It's my pleasure uh, to serve. What is the procedure for keeping more than one time bhoga as it is as it said that whatever we eat, we have we have to offer it to God and eat only prasadam. Yeah, we can offer it. So there is no uh, different procedure, same bhoga offering procedure. Same thing we have to follow whatever times we want to offer. What to do with the Achman water after the puja? Keep it till the night and uh, that Achman water, you know, we can drink because that's a pure water only. We can put it in some glass and drink that. Or uh, if some other plants are there, we can put it in those plants also. Can I put a silver Tulasi plant inside the puja room instead of getting the pot daily inside the puja room? Uh, actually, getting the Tulsi Maharani uh, from outside is very, very important. We can do that. Because the, if you keep tulsi, silver tulsi that is there, you will not get dust of tulsi. No, there. We cannot water also. We cannot do any seva. So better to get the plant. What to do when we are going outside for some days? So at that time, close the altar and request the Lord. You know that uh, this is what uh, you know, we are traveling. So I request you to please take rest and uh, I will resume our seva after we come back. Now we can do that. How to offer Tulsi on the feet and palm as, as it is in the photo. So just take, dip it in the chandan and stick it at the lotus feet of Krishna. Stick it at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and stick it in the hand. You can do that. Why three incense sticks? Usually we use two. Actually in my house also, back in my parents' place, so they would offer two. But then in Shastra it says odd number, three. That's the minimum number. It's a very helpful seminar. My pleasure to serve. On Ram Navmi, can we have Lord Ram photo? Yeah, on the special occasions, we can keep those photos. You know? Like Damodar month, we can have Yashoda Damodar photo. Ram Navmi, we can have Ram, Lord Ram's photo. So we can have that. Not a problem.
thank you very much for all your wonderful comments appreciating the seminar we normally have breakfast in the morning and then after some time we take bath and then offer bhoga which is prepared as lunch is that fine uh, okay it's uh, it's up to you. you you can do that so before that uh, you're not opening the altar this is what i assume so if you're not opening the altar no problem you can continue after that a very elaborate <laughs> my pleasure and i request that if possible please you know, implement amal prabhu my tulsi is in balcony instead of circumambulating the tulsi i take two rounds near tulsi plant is that fine uh, circumambulating is what is important so we get the tulsi plant keep it inside then circumambulate now that's that will be good is it is said in menstrual anyone is there then we should not do any seva to the altar any other person also cannot do is it true so when uh, anyone in the house any female is going through that cycle for few days so males can do if the males are trained you know they can do not a problem but the food that is cooked by them you know that cannot be offered to the lord but basically they cannot participate in any of the uh, deity worship procedure that is there so only the men who is there or other female who is there in the house they can do diya also should we wait yeah we can wait in iskon mysore they told me seven time incense sticks to first panchatatva next to prabhupad and then to krishna and last to tulsi devi three rounds uh, i'm not sure i've never read this so this is the sequence that we have told starting from krishna down to shla prabhupad that's how we offer can you please repeat the bhoga offering procedure i missed it due to poor connectivity you can see the manual i'm going to pass on the manual so please see that or go back to the yesterday's video we'll we'll get you when we offer bhoga multiple times can we keep the bhoga just for a minute as kids will be after us for food <laughs> at least 5 minutes at least 5 minutes we can keep close the altar no 5 minutes at least we can keep the altar isn't big enough to hold the bhoga as well can we leave the offering outside while the altar is closed during chanting of prabhupad mantra etc can we leave the offering outside while the altar is closed who is this sudha mata ji you can send me the photo of your altar i'll tell you what to do if one goes motion more than once like 3 to 4 times in day each time do we need to take bath or without bath can we shower ganga water on the body no problem take bath <laughs> what is the problem <laughs> i take bath every day four times minimum <laughs> we can take not a problem Uh, basically it's like just put some water and come out not like four five mugs just put water and come out but it's difficult to start with at least for not start deity worship you can uh, uh, at least for deity worship when you're coming at least at that time you should take bath you know, to start with are all these procedures needs to be done by everybody in the family or one person can do anyone can do no, there is no problem one person can do the aarti others can you know come and uh, take part in the aarti it is said that anyone who anyone who uh, sees the aarti they also get the benefit of doing the aarti so that's how it is to wash and wipe and then keep it can we light the diya in front of the altar yes is it okay to do tulsi aarti before full aarti no after full aarti you do that's that's good our tulsi plant gets dried most of the times so how to take care so that's uh, that's a whole different topic of taking care of tulsi maharani uh, just water should be proper and then um, sunlight should be proper mostly in uh, metropolitan cities sunlight is not proper so we can keep it on the terrace this is what is my suggestion afternoon when we close the altar what mantra should be be chanted same prayer we can chant that oh lord please uh, take rest that prayer which is there at the end of the manual you can see same prayer we can chant send the link of uh, whatsapp i request riram bro to post the link you'll see it in the chat box you can find the link
night time please switch off the light no need to keep the light on is it okay to offer ready made sattvic snacks no no ready made things from outside please for offering so the whatsapp links are posted here so please uh, use that can we prepare food during uh, and but someone else can offer so during uh, the time the menstrual cycle the females can cook the food but that cannot be offered to the lord so what we can do is the offered tulsis which are there to the lord that offered tulsi we can put and you now everyone can have the food but if you want to offer something so the male person who is there or other member who is there they can offer fruits to the lord means they only can cut and they only can offer but the cooked food at that time cannot be offered but uh, we can mix with uh, the dried tulsi leaves or offered tulsi leaves to the lord and then you know, we can uh, take it how many cotton wicks should we light in front of the altar mm. so if it's uh, one lamp then we can have uh, you know two 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 wicks in uh, the same lamp if we have two lamps then two wicks here two wicks here now we can do that thank you for all your wonderful kind uh, words is chanting one or two rounds of japa mandatory before cooking in case of time constraints that's what i said be practical if it's time time constraints no problem no carry on with cooking can we offer dry fruits or fresh fruits yeah we can do that no problem all the time we can do that but i'm telling you you will become greedy after some time you will you will want to have prasadam after some time then you will cook for krishna then you'll offer it to krishna and when lord will come in the dream and tell how long you'll feed me you know fruits you know feed me something cook then you'll start cooking <laughs> so no problem till then you know go ahead and keep offering fruits dry fruits i also did that when i was back in my college so you know i was carrying my altar wherever i would go so in my college hostel i would just offer fruits and dry fruits you know, for almost 2 years i did that and after coming here also since uh, there was no cooking happening i was taking food uh, prasadam in the temple i would offer fruits and dry fruits only so that's okay fruits are supposed to be cut or we can offer just like that we can cut you no know, that's a seva that we can do cut nicely decorate it nicely on the plate and offer okay on the youtube let me take some questions now can you please explain the numbers 4 2 3 7 so as i said these are the all uh, um, auspicious numbers which are given so that we can focus while doing the deity worship dhoop dono burnt with coconut coil when to burn so any time we can offer dhoop now that is not a problem but then incense has to be offered now dhoop we cannot replace the incense if you attend deity worship mangalarti at iskon temple then do we need to do the same deity worship at home as well at home some worship should happen minimum so but if you are attending in the temple you know that's very nice that's very nice but some minimum thing should happen at home also if we are a full time devotee in the temple then no problem or if you are staying close to the temple and doing all the services in the temple then no problem no, no need to do at home can camphor aarti be offered in what sequence so camphor aarti if you want to offer just before the ghee lamp we can offer camphor aarti is there any concern for size of the deity photos of guru parampara narsimha dev and krishna whatever suits your altar that can be the size it should be visible you know very very nicely visible even from a distance can we light lamp in the evening at what time we should do deity resting deity resting you all can decide you now the time that you want to do there is no hard and fast rule from our side and uh, when it comes to lighting the lamp in the evening yes we can do not a problem one dhoop i offer to lord and one to tulsi maharani is it right so as i said today we learned right so three incense we offer to the lord and same incense we are showing to tulsi maharani also at home if mata ji is going through the days and she is alone how to work out with bhoga offering so if suppose the mata ji is alone just close the altar now for that time so no need to do deity worship at that time just close the altar and request the lord to take rest for some some time so even in the um, youtube i am posting uh, the link for the whatsapp 
you all can join the whatsapp group so i have posted the link for whatsapp group in the youtube you all can join the group all the ones who are not there thank you okay two strands made into one week yeah correct two strands made into one week we can offer okay thank you very much i see uh, uh, all of you, you know, are ready you know to take up some seva i'm very happy uh, and it's so nice that uh, you all are feeling that <laughs> you all have learned some deity worship it's my pleasure to serve all of you all i'm also a very greedy person so i'm sure you know when you'll be doing deity worship you'll remember me and you'll pray for me that goes without saying but still you now with the uh, as a formality i'm saying that please pray for me whenever you go in front of your altar you no know, it's a uh, uh, it's a desire you know to advance very very fast in krishna consciousness and as i already said this desire can be fulfilled only and only when all vaishnavas like you all can pray so if you are pleased with the service little bit whatever we have done so please pray for us thank you very much and my prayer for all of you all that may lord shri krishna empower may the entire guru parampara empower all of us so that uh, sincerely we take up devotional service the basically the panchanga the pan, uh, the five potent devotional process that is uh, sankirtan chanting of the holy names reading shrimad bhagavatam visiting the holy places doing deity worship and uh, associating with devotees these five potent things we have to do Uh, every single day possible yes obviously visiting dham will be once in a year but you know other four should be done as as uh, you know every single day and if we can do that you now we'll get purified fast and we'll go back home back to god and please remember the goal of life is to attain krishna there is nothing else apart from that in life so all this that we are doing every day the deity worship the chanting and everything is just focusing towards that that when will that day come when will i when i'll attain krishna So let's be in that mood and be fired up all the time, and march towards the ultimate goal of life. So thank you very much. Let's meet. If there is some other seminar which we arrange, we'll surely invite all of you all. So please come now for those seminars. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna. Hare Hare. Hare Ram. Hare Ram. Ram Ram. Hare Hare. Shri Prabhupada Ki Jaya.